Hello again. I'm Sonia and I love science. And the reason I love science is not because I am some genius physicist or really great at solving math problems or super savvy in the lab, but I just look around me and I wonder about things and I ask questions and I let my curiosity lead me down a learning pathway. So that is why I am here with you today on behalf of CK12. Let's do some science, ask some fun questions and travel down a learning pathway together, alone, but together. Okay, so we've been exploring electricity this week with a variety of models, such as a bolt of lightning or a flashlight. Be sure to check out those videos archived here on our YouTube channel if you miss them. And I thought we could continue down our electricity learning pathway by exploring how electricity flows through our house. Now, this is more challenging, but I know all of you out there are up for a challenge. Are you up for a challenge? Are you? That's what I thought. Virtual elbow bump. We got this. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to draw a circuit diagram. Any of you out there like drawing? Awesome. Well, you're going to be great at this then. So let me share my screen. Okay. So there's three important symbols that I'm go that we can use to represent the parts of a circuit. So the first one there, let me move my video. The first one there is a battery symbol. So it's like tiny line, long line, tiny line, long line, short line, long line, short line, long line. That is the battery. And remember, the battery provides the energy source in our circuit. Okay. The second symbol is what we call a resistor. And this can be anything that takes that electrical energy from the current flowing and transfers it to other types of energy. So a light bulb transfers it to heat and light. A fan transfers it to kinetic energy, which is just a fancy word for the energy of motion, right? The blades of a fan move. And a resistor symbol is like a squiggly line. That one's really fun to draw. Third symbol is a switch. So in a circuit, in order to control, to, to allow us to have control over the electricity flowing through a circuit, we put in a switch. And when it's open, right, it's kind of like a line at an angle. When it's open, the electricity can't flow through. But when it's closed, you can see it has a nice path and it can flow through. So those are the two symbols for the switch. Now, if I put all three of these symbols together, I can draw a circuit diagram for any type of electrical circuit. I chose a flashlight because it's a really simple circuit and we did um, talk about a flashlight a few days ago. So there you could see the battery symbol, long line, short line, long line, short line. Then you can see the switch in my flashlight. It's open right now, meaning the flashlight's off. Electricity can't flow through it. And then there's a little squiggly line for the light bulb, which is our resistor. Okay. I think you're getting it. And we'll come back to this again and again. So don't worry. We'll get better and better. You are doing great. Okay. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen right now. Okay, there you can see me. All right, cool. We're in business. Basically, there are only two types of circuits that we can create, just two. The first type of circuit is called a series circuit. Yeah, like a TV series where the episodes follow one right after the other, right after the other. And I know many of you out there are binge watching TV series right now, so you can relate. I commend you for taking a break and learning some science right now. Good job. Christmas lights are a great example of many bulbs wired in a series, one right after the other, right after the other. There's only one loop to the circuit that the current can flow through. If one light bulb burns out, the other light bulbs won't work because the current won't be able to continue to flow through it. It kind of acts as if a switch is open. 
Have you ever experienced that? It's really frustrating, right? A circuit that has more than one loop, okay? More than one loop or pathway for the current to flow is called a parallel circuit. Say it with me, parallel. Fun word to say, almost as fun as endoplasmic reticulum, but that's for another day. If one loop of a parallel circuit is interrupted, current can still flow through the other loops. The wiring in a house consists of many parallel circuits. Different levels in your house, different rooms, different outlets in those rooms all provide different loops that the current can flow. Now, electricity is very dangerous, especially the electricity coming out of the outlets in our homes. So never play around with them. Instead, CK12 has created an interactive simulation called Dollhouse. And I'm gonna launch the simulation right now so we can safely explore parallel circuits online. Okay, so I am going to share my screen again. and go to CK12's homepage. There's no place like home, no place like home. Let me try it one more time. All right, now we're in business. Okay, CK12's homepage, ah, home. I'm gonna scroll down to the simulations, right? That beautiful Golden Gate Bridge icon. And I'm gonna click there and we have the dollhouse sim. So it's like the fourth sim down. How fun is this? All right, here we go. Let me make it look all pretty. Okay, how does electricity flow through your house? That's our big question for today. So I am going to toggle over to the sim sandbox, right? Meant for you just to play around and have fun. Okay, so let's talk about what we're looking at here. We have a dollhouse and it's wired um, with a voltage source of a battery, okay? And here we have a battery that 1.5 volts, that kind of looks like a AAA battery to me, it's about 1.5 volts. And you can play around with the different voltage to nine volt battery. That battery looks like the batteries I put in my smoke alarm or maybe some of your toy cars or something like that. So the voltage source for this dollhouse is a battery, okay? And then we have a master switch. So when the master switch is off, no electricity can flow through this house. And that kind of represents the circuit breaker in our homes, and that's to keep us safe, okay? So if the circuit breaker um, is open, basically it stops all electricity going through our house. So let's turn this on, okay? So now, Electricity can flow in our house. And here, just by observing, I see I have one, two, three different loops or pathways that the, that the electricity can flow. So that's more than one pathway. This must be a parallel circuit. And you're exactly right, okay? Now, the cool thing is um, I can then turn the device on. This is a lamp. Ooh, and I see here that something's happening up here. Hey, I recognize that. That is a circuit diagram. So here I see oh, my battery symbol, long line, short line, long line, short line. I see here that my switch is closed. Let's see if I open it. Oh, there it is. So this must be the master switch. Let me just double check that. Oh, yep. So when the master switch is open here, Master switch is closed. I recognize that symbol. And then here, one loop, two loops, three loops, just like my three different um, pathways here. And I see, oh, the resistor symbol. So here's one, two, three different resistors. How cool is that? We can actually understand the diagram. All right, so basically, I'm gonna leave you here to hop on the simulation and play around with it, okay? But I'm gonna give you some suggestions for that right now. So one thing that I noticed is I can turn on this device, right? A light and 
I can turn on this device and this device, right? But what happens if I turn off this middle one? How is it that electricity can still flow through these two? Okay, why don't you investigate that? How, how does that work? The second thing that I'd like you kind of to investigate is why when this lamp turns on, this one doesn't dim, okay? They both can shine just equally as bright. And how would we determine that? Maybe we click on the power, the current, or the voltage. See if you can figure out where that brightness might be able to be determined in the sim, okay? And then the other thing I'd like you to investigate is maybe if I turn this to a fan, right? We talked about that. So now this, this circuit up here changes electrical energy into heat and light. And this circuit here transfers electrical energy into kinetic energy with the motion of the fan. And I'd like you to just see, look at the numbers and compare how does the fan as a resistor compare to the lamp as a resistor, okay? So there's lots that you can do to play and all these prompts are listed in our cafe for you to investigate. And also, I'll stop sharing here. Also, I want you to just go grab some markers and paper and practice drawing some electrical diagrams for different circuits in your house, okay? If you have a dollhouse, why don't you practice drawing what the, what the circuit diagram would look like for your dollhouse? If you don't have a dollhouse, grab a shoebox, make a dollhouse, and draw the electrical circuit diagrams of your, of your homemade dollhouse, all right? Have fun with this. And feel free to take a picture and email it. Um, my, the email is sims, S-I-M-S, -S, sims at ck12.org. That would just make my day if I saw pictures of your circuit diagrams, okay? All the links are below the YouTube video here. So click away and I hope to see you again tomorrow. We're going to talk about gravity and discuss how Isaac Newton changed science forever by simply observing an apple falling from a tree. So I can't wait to see you again tomorrow. Thank you so much. I hope you had fun today and send me a picture of your circuit diagrams, okay? Thank you.